Paul, let's do it.
Anybody glad somebody prayed for you? Come on, y'all acting like we, we didn't come to worship today. Anybody glad somebody prayed for you? You didn't know how you were going to make it, but somebody prayed for you. You didn't know how you were going to come out, but somebody prayed for you. If you're glad somebody prayed for you, I dare you right where you are to give God some praise. somebody prayed for me. I wouldn't be standing here right now if somebody hadn't prayed for me.
is. He's my all and all. Yes. Oh, yeah.
Hallelujah, 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. glad he's your all in all? I mean, anybody glad he's your all in all? Hallelujah. 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 God is my all and all. Hallelujah. 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 There's nothing wrong with praising God. There's, there's no harm in praising God. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we got to steal the water a little bit. It's preaching time. I would that you would join me in the book of 1 John, the fourth chapter, which Reverend Edwina has read so graciously. But I want to go back and look at verses 19 through 21. Verses 19, there we go, the sound's getting better. Verses 19 through 21, where we find these words, we love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates his brother or his sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God who they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. I want you to pray with me these next few moments from the subject, learning to love again. Learning to love again. Do you mind telling your neighbor, say, neighbor, we're learning to love again. Come on, shout with me. We're learning to love again. Now, God, we turn to you because we need to hear a word from you. Lord, I have studied, but I need your strength. I have prepared, but I need your power. 
I'm willing and I want to, but only you can make me able. Lord, I pray now that you would take me deep into your well of anointing, into your storehouse of peace and prosperity. Move in this place today, O oh God, and allow no flesh to glory in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Learning to love again. Back in the day, there was a group known as Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. Y'all talking already. I knew y'all didn't just know hymns. And they used to sing a song entitled, The Love I Lost. Look at Brother Shamble. He's smiling back there. He knows something about that song. It was a song about being in love, getting hurt, and then desperately concluding not to ever love again. Can I share the lyrics? Y'all won't judge me with me, will you? The lyrics say, I, the love I lost was a sweet love. The love I lost was a complete love. The love I lost, I could never, no, never love again. And I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters something you may not know because you know although we have a pew partner we don't know what our pew partner's true love story is because you're on your pew there may be somebody whose story whose love story includes some disappointments includes some rejection you don't know their whole love story their story may include thoughts of suicide because of what they went through bouts of depression for somebody your love story has you at a crossroad where you are just about to walk away anybody know anything about a love that they lost at some point in their lives and so because you don't know your brother's or your, your brother or your sister's story that means you ought to tell them we've got to love again see somebody in this place can identify with those lyrics because you've been right there you you know what it is to be in a place where you're in love and then lose you're trying and you're failing you're extending your hand only to get it not just slapped but bitten by the very people you tried to assist and secretly in your spirit you've decided I cannot love again and don't get it twisted I'm not just talking about romantic relationships because somebody in this place knows what it is to be hurt in your family hurt by your friends wounded on your job and somebody has even been wounded in the church it's in those moments where we have to exercise with both care and compassion before we close our hearts and our minds before we conclude in our spirits that we will completely shut down and I believe God's put us in this sanctuary today so that we could take exceptions with no with no railing accusation so that we could recognize that this is not the time to give up on love because God is love and I want to encourage somebody please don't give up on love because can I give you some good news God didn't give up on you that didn't hit right I better say it again don't give up on love because God didn't give up on you and I ought to have at least 17 witnesses here I'll make number 18 who can celebrate the fact that God never gave up on you but he gave you another chance and therefore you can give the preacher the co-worker your spouse your enemy you can give them another chance it may be rough but just keep loving them they may have broken your heart but just keep loving them they may be rough but just keep loving them they may have walked away but just keep loving them they may have hurt you in spaces that you've never hurt before but you've got to love them again can I go pick up Teddy Pendergrass can I go pick up Teddy Teddy Pendergrass, Teddy Pendergrass said, Teddy P, Teddy P, Teddy P said, it feels so good loving somebody when somebody loves you back. I knew y'all got, y'all were walking with me. And all of us, all of us ought to have a testimony. We've got to love people. We've got to love on people. We've got to love them anyhow. Sometimes you've got to love the hell out of people. But you've got to love them anyhow. Oh, and whenever you love people anyhow, you are free from prisons of fear and guilt. And hear me today. Love is God's greatest gift. Love is the deepest part of God's nature. 
That's why Jesus said, I have loved you. You so you should love one another. See, God wants us to love again in our families, in our relationships, in our communities, on our jobs, in our churches. Because Jesus said, by this, men will know that you are my disciples. Not because you shout, not because of your address, not because of how many square feet you are attached to your property. But God wants to know, can you love people even when they don't love you back? Can you love people even when they can't stand you? Can you love people even when they don't speak to you? Can you love people even when you don't, you don't understand where they're coming from? Can you love them anyhow? After, after all, what good is talking in tongues and you ain't speaking to people? What good is looking good on the outside and you can't speak to people? What good is having all of the outside accoutrements but inside your heart is stale, is stagnant and you forget how to love people. Uh, do you know why? I knew I would freeze up some amens this Sunday. Do you know why the early church grew? The early church spread and stood in the midst of a pagan cultural environment? See, they practiced the radical hospitality of open door. They refused to become just another Greek mystery cult. But they kept the doors open following the words of Jesus Christ. Whosoever will, let them come. They turned that Greco world Roman culture upside down. They transformed that pagan culture into a Christian community. And we have to allow God to do the very same thing with us. We've got to allow God to cause us to love again in this day when government policies enrich the greedy and exploit the needy. We've got to learn how to love again when the cradle to prison pipeline is running mighty fast. In fact, full stream, stream, stream ahead and steam ahead. We've got to learn how to love again when the educational ex escalator of upward mobility is all but broke down. We've got to learn how to love again when the banks get bailed out and people are sold out. We've got to love again. And is there anybody who came to Quinn today because you're going to love again? See, that's what John is trying to download into our spirits in this particular epistle. It's all about love. And you ought to go on and act like earth, wind, and fire for a minute and say it's about love. See, when you can't afford to give anybody, any, when you can't afford to give anything else, just show them some love. When you can't go into the store and buy what you want to buy, you ought to show them some love. In fact, you sit next to somebody on your pew who could use some love today. Why don't you say good morning neighbor it's good to be sitting next to you do you know you sit next to a blessing do you know you sit next to a miracle go ahead and show them some love well they may not be feeling you but let's go on and take a pause for the cause because we ought to really show God some love the one who woke us up this morning and started up is it did anybody come to show God some love has he opened the door for you you ought to show him some love if he made a way for you I dare you to show God some love. Well, y'all be seated. I'm on my way to my first point. There are three things that come out of the text. Three things that come out of this text. First of all, God calls us to a love that is supernatural. God calls us to a love that is supernatural. When I speak of supernatural, I'm talking about a love that runs contrary to how we love naturally. In other words, Brother Percy, uh, love, natural love, is often based on affection and affinity. There is something, there is something that attracted every husband to every wife. She made his liver quiver and his bladder spider, and he had to have that. Maybe he, maybe he had the brawn and the brains in order to do what she needed to do. I don't know what put them together, but that's often based on affinity and attraction, and sometimes that love is regret regrettable. Can I break it down like boxes on recycling day? Uh, there was a woman. She found a man. He had everything she wanted on the outside, but that particular woman went to the police station one day to file a missing persons report Her husband, on her husband. The police officer asked for a de description 
of the man in order to fill out the report. She said, well, he's fat, he's bald-headed, he never shaves, he seldom bathes, he's real sloppy, he dresses real bad, he's always broken in. She paused and said after a moment, I mean, she scratched her head and she said, well, on second thought, don't worry about filing out the police report, just let him stay wherever he is. See, sometimes our love can be a regrettable love, but then our love ought to always be a reciprocal love, a love that loves somebody even when they don't love you back. See, that, that's not how natural love works. Natural love is based on what we feel on the outside. But if you love God without restriction, you got to love God's people without restriction. Somebody may have mis mistreated you, att attacked you, or betrayed you, but God, or they may even have hurt you. But God wants you to love them anyhow. And can we be honest today? There are some people in our lives that are not only hard to love, they hard to like. But you got to love them anyhow. Don't look to your left or your right on the pew because you might be sitting next to them. There are some people who are just hard to deal with. Y'all aren't talking back to me today. Maybe I better preach all by myself. But there are some people on your job, in your family, they may even be in your house. You don't know how to deal with them. But God said love them anyhow. See, John, John is describing a love that is greater than the natural. He's loving, he's talking about, he's talking about a supernatural love. It's a kind of love that loves even when you don't feel love in return. Even when you've been mistreated. It, John talked about it in Matthew 5 and 44 when he said, love your enemies. Anybody ever had to love your enemies? Oh, Y'all quiet on me. I thought I was preaching to some church people. Have you ever had to love your enemies? They were talking about you, but you loved them anyhow. They set up plans to take you down, but you loved them anyhow. They got in corners and talked about you like a junkyard dog but you love them and they were tiptoeing on your last nerve but you love them and I need somebody to get on this love train today is there anybody up in here who can say I've learned how to love people even when I didn't know how to deal with people John, 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 y'all be seated. I'm still early in this thing. I'm coming back to get you, though, I promise. See, John is describing a love that is so strong, is so flexible, is so resilient, is so dynamic that it will enable people and it will enable you to love people that you can't stand. Can I talk about it today? Because this kind of love, it's an eternal love. In this text, verse 7, we are taught that love is of God. Anybody of God today? Did anybody come because? Because God woke you up this morning and you're saying, I am who God says I am. See, John, 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 brother Leon is commanding us to love. And this caliber of love originates with God. It is a love that comes from the very heart of God. In other words, it's an eternal love. But it's also an evidential, an evidential love that only comes from God. It is the evidence of God and the fact that we know God. I don't understand understand church folk who say they know God but won't speak to anybody. I don't understand church folk who say they love God and they're mean and nasty all the time. I don't understand church folk who say they love God and they give him a tip rather than a tithe. I don't understand church folk who say they love God and never have anything nice to say. But if God's been good to you you gotta find a tunnel of hope through a mountain of this spare. If God has been good to you, you ought to bless him and smile and give God praise and love people at the same time. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Jesus said, Jesus said, everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. See, you got to love people anyhow. You got to love people in spite of, but you got to sometimes ask God to give you the strength to love people. Y'all talk back to me if you can. Uh, sometimes you got to say, God, give me the strength to love them. Give me the strength to put up with them. Give me the strength to deal with them. And then love them in spite of. I'm going to my second point. Uh, so we need a love that is supernatural, but we also need a love that is sacrificial. We need a love that is sacrificial. Somebody shout sacrificial. 
Miles, you didn't shout sacrificial. Somebody shout sacrificial. Notice now, John describes for us here what we ought to do to show love to one another. He said in the third verse, we know what love is. How do we know it? Because Jesus displayed it on a hill called Calvary. His love for us was not only stated. You know, some folk know how to talk to talk, but they never walk to walk. You got to be careful hooking up with people who have a good talk game, but they don't do anything. They have a good talk game, but you never see anything. They got a good talk game, but they have no, they don't match the energy. They have a lot to say, but when it comes to the doing, they go somewhere and sit down. I need a savior who can show up when I need him to show up. And so real love is an unselfish love. It's, hard, it's as hard for the preacher as it is for the listener. Love is selfless. It must forget about itself in order to be sacrificial. Uh, it looks like you're offering up yourself and your energy. John tells us a little bit further in the text. He reminds us of a sacrificial love. Uh, if you go on to chapter verse 17 of chapter 3, that's pushing the rewind button. He says, love always, uh, love, God, love comes from God. And, we, and God sees us, and, and therefore we're able to see people as God sees them. Now, this is a word about somebody who's being a spectator. Here is somebody who looks upon other people and does not see them as the world sees them, but sees them as God sees them. In other words, it's a sacrifice to see people through the eyes and the compassion of and concern of Christ. See, I'm like some in this nation who see the unemployed and the under underemployed and feel no, com no compassion. Unlike those who see homes being foreclosed on and jobs being lost and families being fractured and potential being squandered and children being devoured by systems that are unfair and feel nothing and see nothing and therefore they do nothing. But that ought not be our story. We ought to exercise a sacrificial love that loves more than numbers and objects. That loves more than money, profit, and dividends. We've got to see people as Christ sees them, regardless of their color or orientation, where they live or what they drive. We've got to see them as Christ sees them. And aren't you glad God looks beyond our faults and sees every one of our needs? Aren't you glad we serve a God who doesn't judge us like everybody else judges us? But God sees us and blesses us anyhow. See, we've got to see people like Christ see them they may be broken but they're still blessed they may be on crack but they're still chosen they may be fractured but they're still fixable they may be wounded but they're still wonderful they may be painful but they're still powerful they may be struggling sinners but they can still become successful saints is there anybody here grateful that God doesn't judge us like other people do like other people will this quality of love does not look on others with criticism, with judgment, with hatred, with derision, with dislike, but rather it looks on other people with concern and compassion. Do you want to know how to win friends and influence people? Uh, you got to help them not to be complicated. You got to keep on loving them with a love that can penetrate steel doors of prejudice and bias, that can penetrate doors of racism. Love can break through hearts that are filled with bitterness and resentment. Love can break through. There is no greater force on the planet than love. Love will make you will pick you up when you're low. Love will lift you up when you're down. Love will give you the power to try again when you can't find any strength within yourself. Love will make all of the difference. And you can try if you want to. But all of us have some bad days. All of us have some rough seasons. But if I can, and all of us have some lonely moments. But if I can just find some love and show some love, I can make it through the hardest moments of my life. Can I get a witness here? Anybody glad you can press on because of the love God has put in your heart? 
And when you see people through the eyes of love, it cannot be a love that is judgmental, but it has to be a love that is sacrificial. Can I get a witness here? See, love is a verb. But it's also a noun. It is an action, but it can also be personified. Therefore, please hear me today. God is a giver. And never are we more like God than when we give. I'm going to say that again because sometimes I talk too fast. So let me make sure you don't miss it. Never are we more like God than when we give. And never are we more in love with God and in love with God's people than when we're a giver. I want to tell you one evening on Broadway, Star Mary. Mary Martin was to perform on the stage in the South Pacific. And just before she went on the stage, she was handed a note by Oscar Hammerstein, who was on his deathbed. But he, he wrote a new note to her. And he said, Dear Mary, a bell is not a bell until you ring it. A song is not a song until you sing it. The love in your heart was not put there to stay. The love was put there so that you could give it. Love isn't love until you give it away. You got to give it away. And you will be a amazed at how many people right in this very, very sanctuary. They're just waiting on somebody to love them. I know they're looking like Oscar the Grouch but they're waiting on somebody to love them. I know they look like they're tore up from the floor up but they just want somebody to love them. I know they've been frowned up all worship long but they're just waiting on somebody to love them and I want to tell you, you ought to show them some love today. God is the greatest lover but God is also the greatest giver. Y'all still want Walking with me, aren't you? I mean, look at all that God did to create this world. Look at all God gave to create the world. He gave a light to the sun and a globe to the moon, but he kept on giving. He gave a twinkle to the stars and intensity to the wind, but he kept on giving. He gave a roar to the ocean and a babble to the brook, but he kept on giving. He gave a song to some birds and wings to some eagles, but he kept on giving. He gave a Adam a pardon and Noah a boat but he kept on giving he gave Abraham a city and Isaac a well he gave Jacob a staircase he gave Joseph a, Joseph a dream but he kept on giving he gave Moses a rod and Joshua a sword he gave Samson some power and Gideon a victory he gave David some music and Solomon some wisdom but he kept on giving he gave Job a horse and Jeremiah some fire he gave Ezekiel a wheel in the middle of a wheel but he kept on giving and the Bible says oh the Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish he gave his son to the world his, his son gave sight to the blind his son gave hearing to the deaf and he kept on giving he gave strength to the weak comfort to the lonely light to the lost he gave relief to those in trouble and he kept on giving until one Friday he gave his body to the cross gave his grave gave his soul to the grave oh but he kept on giving he gave his son to the Jesus to John and gave his mother to John but he kept on giving and I'm so glad he never gave up on me well, there's one more thing in this text and I'm through. I think I've kept you long enough. But I'm so glad God keeps on giving. There's one more thing to come out of the text and I'm through. And that is, that is, that is, uh, God also gives us a love that is steadfast. God also gives us a love that is steadfast. In the eighth verse, it says, but anyone... Who does not love does not know God, because God is love. And since God loved us so much, we surely ought to love one another. See, we ought to love others as Jesus loved us. Well, how did Jesus love? He loved without condition. And that's a stretch for some of us in this place, because our love is always conditional. We love people based on what they do for us. We love people based on what they can do for us. But the text says we love him because he first loved us. Our love for him is motivated by his love for us. He loved us even when we were unlovable. And when we love like Jesus, 
There wouldn't be no demands on our love. We will, we will love regardless of how others feel about us or what they say and do. We will love no matter what people put us through. His, un, his love is an unconditional love. It is full of grace and mercy. In verse 9, it says it was, ma it was manifest in God's love towards us because God sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might live through him. See, God's love is seen in his only begotten son. His love, his son's love is seen in giving his life on a hill called Calvary because Jesus gave everything he had in order that we might have everything that we have. And when we love like Jesus, there will be no restraints or restrictions. When we love like Jesus, we become a no limit soldier, unconditional love. It is full and forgiving. The 10th verse says, herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. So much so that he sent his son as a propitiation of our sin. Uh, for our sins, rather. Uh, his love is a forgiving love. The Christian army is the only army that shoots its wounded. But we've got to love people who are hurting and helpless. We've got to love people who are troubled and dealing with trials. We've got to love people. See, Christ is a forgiver. And Christ restores. But he also renews. He renews by covering us with his blood. And aren't you glad for the blood of Jesus? I don't know about you, but I love God for myself because in spite of God keeps blessing me and in spite of God keeps making ways for me because he loves me so much. He looked beyond my hangups and he sees my hurts. He looks beyond what I've done and he sees what I need to do. He says in this text, uh, if God loves us so much, we ought to love one another. Well, I got to go on and close here, but I'm glad today that he's a, Jesus is the lover of my soul and God keeps loving us. God looked down and saw inequality and poverty and disease everywhere when God looked down and saw 80% of the world's resources being controlled by 20% of the world's people. When God looked down and saw 1% of the people controlling 50% of the wealth. When God looked down and saw blinded eyes and cold hearts. When God looked down and saw deafened ears and deformed bodies. When God looked down and saw trouble and tragedy. When God looked down hunt your neighbor real quick and say neighbor he's closing now when God looked down and said who will go for me God who will go down and save my world there was a seraphim standing there equipped with three pairs of wings they looked down at them and saw a mountain of sacrifice it was a hill it was a hill shaped in the shape of a skull and they said we will not go down the archangels were there they were strong and mighty mighty in power. They were endowed with feet like lion. Uh, and, and when they looked down and they saw some like hammers and some like nails. The, and when they saw an old rugged cross, they said, we will not go down. The 24 elders were there. They were bowing and praising before God. The throne at the throne, casting their crowns at his feet. Uh, and they looked down. And when they saw Joseph's tomb, and they shouted, they recognized, we can't do it. And so faith was there. Faith was too proud. Righteousness was there. But righteousness was too pure. And so since nobody else would go, Christ stood up and said, since you can't find anybody, I'll go by myself. He dressed up like a lamb and said, prepare me a body. I'll go by myself. I'm ready to suffer. I'm ready to die. And he did that thing. He was born in Bethlehem. Him, laid in a manger, slept in uncovered hay. He was haunted by Herod, smuggled into Africa, reared in Nazareth, baptized in the Jordan, driven in the wilderness, stopped by Satan, misunderstood by his family, rejected by 
by a race, betrayed by his family, body hung on in there, turned on by a, by a buddy. He was arrested in Gethsemane, hung up on trumped up charges, beaten and molested, all oh, condemned and put aside. Pilate was there and said, I find no fault, but he hung on in there. He died. Anybody know he died? He died until agony showed up. He died until sweat showed up. He died until his blood spewed out. But early, 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 one Sunday morning, he said, I love my people. I'm coming up. I'm coming up. I'm coming up. Is there anybody here who can say, I'm glad he died for me. I'm glad he died for me. I'm glad he loves me. He loves me. I'm going to love again. I'm going to try again. I'm going to give it another try. Say yes. Learning to love again. Somebody has given up on love, but love deserves another chance. I need you to survive. You know that song? I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I need you to survive. Everybody standing in this place. I want to encourage somebody. You are You've given up on love. I need you to survive. You've decided, you've concluded you never to love again. To me. I but I dare you to hug your neighbor and say, neighbor, I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. I love you. Let me hear you say, I need you. That's it, that's it. You need me, we're all a part of God's body, stand with me, agree with me, we're all Come on, find five people you've never spoken to before. Tell them I love you, there's nothing you can do about it. Come on, you're going to have to move today. Find some people. Love on them a little while. I need you to survive.
if you're in this place and you've not given your life to Christ, I want you to come right now. If you're in this place and you don't have a church home or you're looking for a church home, I want you to come right now. Come on, they're coming. Come on, they're coming. Come on, they're coming. I need you. I pray for you. I pray for you. Today, words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. This is a will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. You are. Be seated in the presence of our God. Hallelujah.